Losing my brother, when you lose somebody, there's something that just sticks with you in your heart, like a little piece of you goes. Uh, one of your friends told me that even though you were only separated um, by a couple years uh, with your brother Bobby, that in a way your friend thought that he filled some sort of void that was left by your father. Um, what do you think? Oh, no doubt. Because, you know, Bob was always there. He was an older brother. I could go to him for advice. I never thought of it as going to him as a father for advice. He's my older brother. And he was always there. He was cool. How do you think he influenced you? Oh, he definitely influenced me, my God. He's the first one getting to motorcycles, and uh, he would be one that, you know, would kind of stray me in the right direction. I remember once uh, our little teeny gang was going to get into a gang fight with another little teeny gang, and my brother showed up. He was much taller than all of us, and when he showed up, it was the end of the fight. The other guys ran away. So that was pretty good. No one got hit. <laughs> How did you find out about the accident? I, I got a phone call. Uh, they, they, they ran me down the, uh, and, and said, you know, uh, are you Johnny Jory? I said, yes, okay, we have Robert Anthony D. Jory here, uh, and he's in critical shape. We're down here at this hospital in Santa Monica. You better get down here. So I immediately went down there to see what was happening, immediately. And his wife had found out about it at the time, and she had joined me down there, and he was in critical care. He got in a very bad motorcycle accident, and they didn't have helmets in those days, and he flew off, he just freak accident, hit his head against a wall, and uh, uh, ended up killing him. It was unfortunate. You were the most positive person ever. Everybody that knows you always says that. How do you recover from that? You never recover from something like that. If you lost a child or a brother or a sister or someone you're very close, you don't really recover. I mean, you go on with your life. You don't recover from not remembering. You always remember them and some of the good things you had together. Did it affect me at all? Yeah, losing my brother, when you lose somebody, there's something that just sticks with you in your heart, like a little piece of you goes. You know, and, and, and I still think about him on, on different occasions when I'm doing something. What makes you think about him? Oh, I could be riding my motorcycle, for example. Boy, would Bobby really like me, you know, doing this with me. That would be really cool. And he was already a huge success. Yeah, I, oh, I mean, very I, I success. Think he um, was really doing well in uh, printing. Um, he started and, photocopy machines uh, for four cents a copy. He's the one that started. He rented a Xerox machine. They wouldn't let you buy. He would rent it, and then I think he would pay a half a cent a copy. And for four cents a copy, right in the middle of Beverly Hills, got a little store. He would do it for all these attorneys, make all their copies. In those days, you either had to lease this giant machine, but he leased it, but for many people, so it made sense. Why do you think two kids that grew up poor as could be became so successful? I would say, first of all, define success. To me, success is not how much money you have or how powerful you are. Success is how well do you do what you do. Growing up, my mom would make sure one week I'd sweep the floors, the other week my brother would do the dishes, and we'd switch. And she'd go checking things out. You didn't move this, you didn't clean this right. We learned how to do a job really, really well. So automatically, we had a job. We did the best we could, even when nobody else was looking. It was just how my mom brought us up. And she was positive. Guys, you can do anything you want to do. Just do it, do it, do it.